Okay, so I'm gonna wait a minute, see if anybody's gonna join us. I'm here with Shelly. This is Chris. Um, Peg's on vacation for the next three weeks, so we were sub subbing in. Today is my week, and I'll be back in two weeks. Suzanne will be doing next week. So I'll give everybody a chance. Oh, hi, Becca. Let's see if I get a couple people coming in and just give everybody a chance. So we were just trying to decide what we wanted to do this week. And I guess being I'm one of the knitting teachers here, I decided, how oh, let's talk about gauge. It's something that everybody kind of knows but not really sure about. So let's go into a little bit about gauge. Okay, so hello, Colleen. Okay, thank you, Becca. So we got, and if you're here, say hi to me. So at least I feel like I got some people watching. Okay, so gauge is a measurement of your knitting. Okay, it's usually done in a ratio of your stitches to rows per inch or per four inches. Okay, I think of it as your thread count on sheets or mile per hour in the car. Um, if you're going 50 miles an hour and you've got to travel 200 miles, you know you're going to make it in four hours. Same thing with knitting. If you're knitting 20 stitches for four inches, you know to get eight inches, you've got to knit 40 stitches. So it's kind of the same thing, but we got to be able to measure it. And most of your patterns or your designers design their patterns around it, and they'll show an example. They'll say 20 stitches by 26 rows equals four by four inches, or 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters, which is the only way I can remember metric measuring. I, if I know 10 centimeters equals four inches, that's the only thing I know from knitting, and I can equate that with other measurements when they give it to me, I do it all the time. Okay, uh, hi Sharon, hi Kathy. Okay, so everybody has their own gauge. There is no set gauge you know there is no the label will say something it'll give you a gauge but that's really just an average okay you do everybody has their own gauge they develop their own way of knitting whether okay and they after time you your gauge becomes almost instinctual um you don't have to think about it anymore all right so you have your own tension now, Broco recently did a, well, it was 2018. It's called the Great Swatch Experiment. They sent out yarn and needles to 24 different knitters. They told them exactly what they wanted to knit, how big of a swatch, what stitches to use. They used a guard of stitch edge with a stockinette center, 30 stitches, blah, blah, blah. And then when everybody was done, they were to send it back. It was amazing the differences they got. The largest one to the smallest one with over an inch difference in height and in width. They had almost 24 different sizes, but when they figured it out, the, the middle of the ground, the median or the average was just about what their label said, even though almost nobody actually got that label size. Okay, but the average, if you averaged everybody's out, was really close to exactly what they said. So it was really kind of fascinating, but it did tell you that everybody has their own gauge. So when you knitting and you see my knitting or you see some your neighbor friends knitting, don't worry about it. You know what I mean? That is your own knitting, your own style. Okay, so when you're looking at a, I printed it off backwards, so it'll be forwards. Okay. So if you're looking at a label on a yarn, or sometimes in a knitting pattern, you'll see a box like this, and they do it for crochet too. And crochet has the same issue with gauge and stuff like that. But we're gonna focus on knitting because that's my thing. Suzanne can talk on crochet. All right, so you can see it's saying it's a four inch by four inch box. Okay, they're saying on a size 10. They're saying you're gonna, should get 14 stitches and about 18 rows. Now. That doesn't mean I'm gonna get that. Doesn't mean Shelly's gonna get that. I might get 18 rows, but I might only get 13 stitches. Shelly might get 15 stitches and exactly with the amount of rows that they recommend. Everybody's different, it's okay, okay? Why are there different, why is all of our knitting gauges different? 
A lot of it is because we have different knitting styles and habits. I know I knit Continental the majority of the time, but I do knit English sometimes and I help my students with a lot of English. So my Continental has a tendency to be slightly tighter than my English. So when I gauge, I gotta gauge in the way I'm gonna knit that project. Okay, so English and English versus English versus continental does make a difference. How you hold your working yarn. Okay, whether you just hold it with two fingers, Pam does this with her left hand, and she's a loose knitter. I hold it in between, I run it through my fingers, so I'm a tighter knitter. A thrower, somebody might drop it, pick it up. Some people wrap it around their finger. That all affects your gauge. Your body, your tension. Um, if you're a relaxed knitter, you feel comfortable, you're, you know, your hands are just working, you're gonna be more relaxed, your tension's not gonna be quite as tight. If you're a nervous knitter and you're white knuckling it, your, ten your stitches are probably gonna be a lot tighter. Your mood can even affect your knitting, okay? If I'm watching a scary movie, I'm gonna get kind of freaked out and I'm gonna start getting tight. So my, t my tension will tighten up. If I'm listening to nice, soft, mellow music in the background and my husband's downstairs not bugging me, I might be more relaxed and more easy. So all these are normal. It's nothing wrong with you and it's nothing wrong with your tension. So that is the, the plus side. Now, why is gauge so important? Gauge is important because most patterns and most good designers write a pattern to obtain a, a size. They'll tell you the, you know, the washcloth is gonna be this big or the sweater is gonna be this big around. And they get, they will tell you, I did this by knitting in this gauge. Then they did their amount of stitches to maintain and get to that gauge. Now, you know, and I know it's everything I'm saying. Okay, so you really wanna be able to match what the designer is trying to do. She gives you that gauge so that you can get the same outcome that she got. If she thinks it should be 40 inches around your bust, you want to match it, and she's saying it's going to take 200 stitches, you got to be in the same gauge to get the same amount. So, now, what some people consider stitches versus row on gauge. Most people think stitches is probably more important than the row counts. Reason being is most of the time it's what you're wearing and the stitches are going across and trying to go around you or the length of something, but I mean, or the width of something. The length, you can adjust. You can add a couple extra rows too. Most patterns will say knit until you have 12 inches. Hi, Kathy. Knit until you have 12 inches. It doesn't say knit X amount of rows. And if it does, and it hits you in the wrong spot, you add a few rows, okay? But it is good to be aware of because you do have some fitting issues sometimes under the arm or something, or something might be a little shorter than, and a shawl or something might be a little shorter than you thought it was gonna be. So being aware of it is good. Hello, Donnie. That's my grandson. <laughs> But being aware is also very good to know about rows. But stitch count seems to take the priority of everybody's attention. So sometimes it's not important depending on the project. Some projects you can get away without having to do a gauge or know the gauge or anything on it. It's not as critical. The, the, the size is more aesthetic than it is function. So let's say you did a scarf Okay, I got this little chart here. Okay, and I got a couple different projects up here. So if the pattern was gauge was originally 20 stitches for four inches, and I'm doing a hat that's got 90 stitches on it. With, with doing 20 stitches per four inches, I'm gonna have an 18 inch circumference. But if I do 19 inches, if, I, if I'm knitting 19, I'm only gonna get 18.94, but I'm gonna get like 19 inches. If I'm doing 21 stitches, one stitch tighter, I'm gonna get about 17 inches. 
Now on a hat, you usually have your ribbing and you usually have a little smaller gauge. So, you know, it's not as critical. So you might not worry about it too much. Now, you wouldn't want to turn around and do a bulky hat and only get 14 stitches per inch, and that would really throw off your count for your hat. You wouldn't want to do that. But if you're within an inch or two, you know, a stitch or two, it probably wouldn't make a big difference on a hat. On the scarf, okay, you're doing 50 stitches and you're getting 10 inches. Well, do you really care that the scarf, instead of being 10 inches, is 10 and a half or 9 and a half? Probably not. Okay, so I'm not going to worry too much about my gauge as long as it's close. On a blanket, okay, the blanket needs 200 stitches to do 40 inches. If I'm doing it 19, which means I'm knitting looser, and then I'm going to have a bigger blanket. If I'm knitting a little tighter, I'm going to have a smaller blanket. Now, when it comes to sweaters and tops, there's where the real one lies. That's when your gauge becomes so important. And I look like I look like Wilson from Home Improvement. <laughs> okay, so that's when you really need to worry about this. Because if you were trying to make a sweater that was 44 inches around, and it, the sweater is designed to have two to three or four inches of ease, and you made it looser, you'll end up getting a 46 inch sweater, and now you're gonna have five to six inches ease, and it's not gonna look the same. It's gonna kinda look sloppy on you, unless it was designed for that. Or if you knit too tight, you're only gonna have 42 inches and if you knit too tight, now this sweater is going to be a very fitted sweater. And I don't know about you, but I don't wear fitted sweaters. Okay? So having understanding gauge and making sure you're following it, what it was designed for, depends on the circumstances. Okay? So now there's a way to talk about it. Okay? The biggest thing to you could do is if your gauge is different, let's say instead of getting 20 stitches per inch you got 19 how do I get it up to 20 okay 19 means you were too loose so we need more stitches to get to 20 so we got to go down a needle size to get more stitches a lot of people try always trying to figure out do I go up or do I go down do I go up or do I go down if you need more stitches you got to go down a needle size you got to make your stitches a little tighter if you did 21 and you want to get down to 20, you got to you got to get less stitches. So you need looser stitches, so you got to go up a needle size. That is one way. Now, how do you really know your gauge? Hi Peggy. Sitting there in Cape Cod making me do this. <laughs> so the other thing, one of the ways to do it and the best way to do it is swatching. Now, I know a lot of our knitters wine. I teach a lot of classes and I say you got to make a swatch and they all cry. Do I really have to? It's a waste of yarn. It's a waste of my time. I don't consider it a waste of time or waste of yarn. If I'm knitting myself a sweater, I've invested more than money than I wanted my husband to know and I'm going to invest a lot more, a lot of time. I mean, we'll have hours and hours in that sweater. So when it's done, I want to know it's going to fit me. I want to know it's going to look the way I want it to look. So swatching is really important. So if you take, take one night and you swatch and you now know, yes, I work. Now I know it's going to look like what I want it to look like and it's going to fit me and I'm going to use it. I'm not going to waste all that yarn and I'm not going to make something I did all that hours. That is well worth that little bit of time of one night. So swatching. So now we're gonna talk a little bit about swatching, okay? Now, when you get a pattern and it says gauge 20 by 26, let's say they say for four inches, they'll usually say in stock in that. Sometimes they might say in cable pattern chart A, they might, give you or they might say in lace work in pattern it's really important you do your gauge swatch in what they recommend you do now the majority will be stocking that but bear in mind it's not always so 
You want to do it. Like today, this we have the elder throw coming out. I don't know how many people are doing the knitted elder throw. Well, six release came out this week, and it is a slip stitch block. And we had a couple people flagging up on Facebook saying, not from our site, but to the Rowan site, saying they were having trouble with gauge with the new block and that it was going to be a problem because this is like a patchwork block um, quilt. And if one block isn't sized right, the quilt's not going to be able to be put together right. So people were really nice. The thing was, it was in color work, a slip stitch color work. The girl was evidently pulling her yarn too tight, which made everything narrower than what it was designed for. So she had to rip out, start all over again, and then now she said she's getting much closer to the gauge. Okay? So you want to do a nice gauge swatch. So how do you do a gauge swatch? Now, most gauges are based on four inches. And the bigger the swatch, actually the better you can get and closer you can figure out your actual true gauge. You can actually get it down to like quarter of a stitch or half a stitch or something. I'm not going to lie. I don't usually go that big, but I will tell you, like, this was a gauge swatch I did a number of years ago for my Vert glass. Like, three years ago, I still had the swatch. Okay? It was a custom-fit sweater. Now, if I was going to go through all the problems with the custom-fit sweater, which said, what is your gauge? They didn't give a gauge. We gave it to them. But he did my yarn, my needles. I did take the time to make a bigger swatch so that I could get a really, really good, true measurement of what my gauge was. And if you noticed, I did a seed stitch, let's see if I can show you, border. And then I did the stockinette in between. The gauge was based off a of stockinette. I wanted an edge that was just gonna keep it flat. Some people do garter stitch around their swatches, which is fine, I preferred stock. I preferred C stitch because stock and um, garter stitch has a different row gauge, so it kind of squishes it down artificially. Where stockinette pretty much has the same row gate row count as a uh, stockinette, so it kind of keeps everything laying nicer and flatter. Mm -hmm. C stitch, yeah. The garter bunches it up. I don't know. I might have misspoke there. Okay. So. The bigger, more you can do, the better. But I will say, most of the time, I'm only doing something this wide. <laughs> okay. Now, when you're measuring, oh, I, I was going to get in one of their our gauge squares. I'll show you a gauge square. Um, when you are doing your block and you knew your block, now, I base things off a lot of times um, how many stitches are going to be in that four inches. So, let's say if it's 20, I might cast on, you know, 30, 32 stitches. Um, that way I have a little bit of edge and then I have the center because I don't want to measure I don't want to measure my stitches too close to the edge up here where I changed or too much closer to here because the seed stitch will affect it. I want to measure my stitches in the middle away from anything else that's going to change or alter the way it's going to feel or look. Okay. Sometimes if they're sitting on the needles, they'll stretch it out too much um, or bunch it up too much. So you want to be in the middle of the fabric when you go to measure. So these are handy dandy tools. This is a four inch square measuring tool. So you can put it on here, okay? And then you can count the stitches all the way across. And then you know that's four inches and you know what you've got in four inches. And you can do the same thing up and counting your rows. So these are really handy tools, okay? So if you don't have one, very important. You can use a ruler also. This looks great, doesn't it? <laughs> you also can use a ruler and measure. But for me, it's kind of nice when I can like trap it and I can really see because here I have a tendency to do this where this I can kind of lock it down a little bit more. Or another option, and this is one I use quite often too, is if I did 30 stitches across and I put three stitches on both sides for my seed stitch, so I have 20 stick stitches in the middle, I'll measure my length of my stockinette from here to here. And then I will measure that within an eighth of an inch and then divide it by how many stitches I have in the middle. And that'll give me an even more accurate gauge swatch. Okay, so 
making your swatch a little bit bigger than just a four by four or two by two is kind of important. Okay. Now this is an unblocked gauge. Okay. You have it blocked. Now some yarns balloon when they're blocking. Some yarns have no effect. Okay. Most of the ballooning happens with superwash wool because we've taken out all their uh, barbs. Okay, so they can slide more. Most of your regular wool doesn't balloon too much. Uh, but different wools and cottons and acrylics and blends will react differently. And knowing whether it balloons or not is kind of, you know, important. So if you're working with a new yarn that you've never worked with before, take the time and block it. So usually if I work with something brand new, and I've never used it or something I'm totally foreign to and or somebody's made comments online, oh, I had trouble, it ballooned on me. I will take an actual swatch. I will count my gauge pre-blocking and then I will mark my gauge after blocking. And sometimes I'll let it run around and kind of hang out my knitting bag and get back to its all totally dry natural state and get the gauge a third time doesn't change usually too much but it can okay so you know you got to think about different things when you're blocking now there's other things that can change your um, stitch stitches or your gauge okay you got your own body your own tension your own way of knitting okay we talked about how you can move your needles up and down to change your gauge Another thing you got to think about is your needles themselves. Different needles knit different ways. I did this gauge swatch a couple of years ago as a, for another custom job. Okay, and I can tell how many, I can tell which needles did what section. I put, I did three different, three different needles on this. All right, so these are my little purl stitches. I have six of them. That tells me I did it on a size six. I got six down here. This was done on another size six. And down here, this was done on a five. So the two sixes were two different needles. And I got three quarters of a stitch difference. One was a higher, higher, and one was an adding. Two phone, two things in the way. The higher, higher, and the adding have a little bit of difference in their slide and their metal. And Haya Haya has a very sharp tip with a longer taper. So when I'm knitting on my tips, my stitches can be smaller. Okay, so the tip length, the taper length, the type of tip makes a difference too. Whether it's wood, wood will slide differently than um, metal will. These are, so sometimes just switching the needle from a wood to a metal or a metal to a wood will change your gauge. So keep that in mind also, okay? Now, if you're using different yarn weights than what the original was planned, or your yarn type than what was originally planned uh, for the pattern, that'll make a difference too. Um, sometimes, if let's say the pattern was written for, I don't know, um, a, a, a sport weight and you're trying to use a worsted but it's kind of on the heavy side of the worsted and they're making it tight on the sport weight or something you might not be able to get that worsted to knit down far enough even if you try and put it down on a weight on a really really small needle because the thickness of the yarn will only let you go down so far in stitches so if you ever hear you hear the terminology wraps per inch I never understood what that meant right away but wraps per inch is talking pretty much how tight you can make those stitches, okay? So if your wraps aren't going to get down there, you're not going to get there. I can go down to a three, and I still can't get my worsted to go down any farther than it was on a four. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Now, like right now, I'm currently doing an ED summer top. Um, and I'm teaching the class. The original pattern for the ED was knitted in linen. And it was knitted on a size four needle. Okay, the linen is a different animal and it is a stiffer yarn. It doesn't hug the needle very well, so it kind of makes a looser stitch. Now, the linen, after you use, after you wear it, it gets softer and softer and softer with time, so it's a gorgeous yarn. 
but initially when you're first using it, it's a stiffer yarn. It doesn't fold. It doesn't tighten up against the needles very well. So a size four has got what they got on their gauge, which was a, I think we were 22. I can't remember what it was. Now I went and used a Merino, which has a tight twist, hugs the needle really well. So I had to go up two needle sizes to get the same gauge. It's working out beautiful, loving it. I'm very happy with it. So sometimes you have to think about the different ways to what's calling, causing different things. Now, can you block your gauge to make it bigger? Some, okay. It depends on the yarn. If it's all natural wool, you're not gonna get as much as you think you are. If you're super wash or something else, you might get more, sometimes too much more if it's a yarn that blooms. There was a website called um, Sub Yarns. They did an experiment too. So I was reading about all these different companies about gauge and everything. They did an experiment and they did it. They swatched up a whole bunch of swatches. So they show the original sizes was 14 centimeters by 13 for all the blocks. When, when they were blocking it, they stretched them off to different. One of them, they stretched as high as 19 by 18. Then when the block dried, they unpinned it, and they gave you another measurement. And so many, the 19 by 18 went down to 16.5 to 15.5. Okay, so they didn't come close to keeping their original. Okay, they did notice one thing, too. If you pull for length... You have a tendency to lose some in the width, and if you pull for width, you lose some of it in the length. But they also found out after you blocked it, yes, you got a little bit of, you added some, but after you washed it a second time and now you're not pinning it, you're not blocking it, you're just kind of laying it to fly, a lot of them went back almost to their normal original gauge. Now, granted, this was all wool, wasn't a merino, I mean, it wasn't a superwash, it wasn't cotton, it wasn't different things, but it's something else to keep in mind. You might get a little bit, but you're not going to get that much. So, I hope I didn't talk your ears off too much. I hope Peggy's having a great time in, in um, Cape Cod. Bring me back some lobster. Um, next week, we will have, uh, Suzanne's going to be on, and she's going to be talking about army gummies or with it, those little guys those crocheted little guys um we are just remind everybody we are open thursday friday and saturday 11 to 5 each day okay we're doing our social distancing we're wearing our mask we're wiping our hands with hand sanitizer uh, we're limiting four customers per, in the store at a time um, but if you need something, you want something, get in touch with us, give us a call. Um, we just sent out an email with some new classes. Um, Suzanne's doing a beginning crochet class and she's got a beautiful cow coming up in crochet cow. Um, I'm doing a beginning knitting. So if anybody knows some knitting people, people that want to learn how to knit and I'm going to be doing socks. Okay. We're doing, going to do a sock class online. Um, so if you guys have anything or need anything, don't hesitate to call us and talk to us. And I hope you guys are staying safe and sane in this crazy time. And best thing yet, I got finally got a hairdresser appointment for this week. So next time you see me, it'll be a lot shorter. All right. Have a wonderful day. And we're out. Bye.